Hey folks, Vlad is here, and today I'm going to share a couple of interesting things with you. First, I want to talk about the education. Uh, music education in the world is uh, it's not that bad, but it's not that good either. And I've, I've known this on my own skin. Uh, since I was a little boy, I wanted to learn everything I've heard on, on records. And the first records that I, I had were Bach, Mozart, I loved especially Bach uh, organ uh, compositions and choir. And I had no idea what they were doing, but it was beautiful. I think I was seven years old. And uh, a lot of these <clears throat> ideas kind of stuck in my head and I didn't know what were there. And I went to the piano and I tried to kind of imitate what I heard. A lot of that was correct and a lot of that was wrong, but I didn't know how to do this. And, um, and I wanted to learn proper and I went to a private teacher and then I studied at Berkeley College of Music and then you know the career and the whole thing and and I'm still learning however there are a couple of things that I've played since I was about maybe eight years old nine years old and they sounded good and nobody knew why it sounded good and I remember I asked a lot of my teachers back at Berkeley why I play something that sounds good and they couldn't explain it so, and it doesn't say that Berkeley is a bad school, it's a great school, it's the best. But a lot of these things are kind of lost in knowledge and chain. So I want to share this with you. And uh, first, uh, number one rule, uh, don't play scales from one to one. Okay, uh, for two reasons. Number one, you will never hear the phrase. Number two, you don't need two tonics at once. Right? Even though in blues we do a lot of that. For different reasons though. Now, what I mean by that, let's say if I have a B flat, this is a B flat, right? And I do a B flat major from one to one, right? This is how they teach kids, right? What I do is one to seven and back. If you do swing as I do, Sounds really even. Right? Right? And you hear that chord. So it kind of creates this melodic idea already. And number two, because with this kind of technique, you can always switch to a different chord quite easily. For example. It sounds really nice and it's already creating melody for you right even though I'm playing just very banal chords <clears throat> what I'm creating is called movements so the movement a word that's been lost I think in education because music kind of moves you right it, it goes from one destination to another destination let's say you go from one to seven seventh heaven right to heaven <laughs> so if you go to heaven you need to know the the way back, right? You have to do this journey because if you're gonna stuck in heaven, nobody knows if you're gonna come back. And a lot of people got stuck there and never came back. So you have to make sure that have you have the roadmap for that. And then also, uh, when you travel with these to the seventh heaven and back, uh, is the journey that matters. Is the journey that people hear? That's the emotion. But the emotion, the approach, when you tell the story to people, you tell them the journey which you experienced, right, through music, and you tell them, right, uh, how it feels, and they feel it with you, right, in their own interpretation, where are they going, but you take them, you help them getting there, right, so that's the idea number one. Number two, when you practice scales, uh, don't think of... Um, how fast or slow, it really doesn't matter. I personally like slow music, but uh, the idea of practicing, practice the intervals, that you hear the intervals, right? Right, all of that stuff, that you hear that. And in other words, you can do, first start practicing in C major, for example. You practice, you, you practice with uh, the second. Right, 
So for example, you have a chord like that, right? Right? And you do the third. Right? And uh, the fourth. The fifth. The rock musicians know how to do the fifth, right? And the sixth, right? I like the sixth. Right? It's beautiful. It's already a phrase. And I do it. I do a lot of that six. And uh, when you know these phrasing, then you create music because one scale already is a lot, right? And then you harmonize it. You harmonize it with one, three, five, or with one, three, five, seven. I harmonize with one, three, and seven. What I mean by that is you have the C, right? One, three, seven. And you go to the second chord, one, three, seven, again. That's how I harmonize it, right? Right? If you have a scale, what I previously did, the, the, the diminished six, basically. Right? Then you have... switch a lot of different ideas there. If you, that lesson is on YouTube. So um, that's harmonizing. Now how you connect, how you create these movements, here's the deal. Through the diminished scale. I'm not going to go into theory to that, but I'm going to show you how it's made. Simply and straightforward. When you go from the one to the second, let's say you go from one chord to the second chord, right? You go through the diminished scale below the root of the second chord. Right? So if this is C, second is D, so below it's going to be the D flat, and then you could do the D flat diminished. And then again to the third, below the third. Right? And then here is a tricky one because you do this. So when you have the the half step in between the, the chords, this one will become your diminished. Then again, to the fifth. And then again. And then again. And back to. Again. If I'll do it slowly, you follow me, okay? So in other words, I did right, then stay like that. These are kind of triads that I do, right? If we do a phrase like uh, I showed you before, let's say creating the six, one, three, five, seven, six on each chord, on each chord, it will sound like this. It's very, it's very simple idea, right? 
Right? And I do this all the time in my improvisations. So the movement is very important. Now let's explore this in blues. For example, if I have very slow, let's say, blues, right? Let's say in B flat. see what I did here. So if I have the B flat major, right, then I go below the fourth, which is the third, right? Right? That's what I did, just like I did before, okay? In other words, if I play B ball, for example, right? This is how fast I go there. And you can do this all the time. Or if you do the, the proper blues, <laughs> I'll show you how it will sound. That's diminished. Right? So in other words, when I go to the second chord, for example, right? So I do... So what I, did, what I did here, that's a diminished scale. Right? Right? So this is how I connect the dots, right? If I do, let's say, a simple, just, uh, pentatonic blues, right? So. But you get the idea. So you basically connect things with this diminished, right? Or if you play fast B buff. And... to the, the second chord. Right? Also, 
Don't, don't forget, when you start the blues, you know the blues. Right? This is the B flat major, the B flat seven. That's your the E flat major, the E flat uh, minor, and then six. That's it, folks. So hopefully you enjoyed it, and it's going to be useful for your playing, either your uh, guitarist or any other musician. Vocalist, the same thing, by the way, I didn't mention it. For example, if you're a vocalist, don't think this is all for instrumentalists. In order to hear these things, for example, even in blues... Right? Da, 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 but you can do a phrase. Right? That's already a phrase. Right? You have to hear these things in order to get the right ideas, okay? That's it, folks. Thank you, and uh, this is our guitar lesson number or whatever. I'll see you next time whenever I have time. Bye.